Welcome to MD. In this video, I will review about numbers. So, what do we know about numbers? The first uh, type of numbers that come natural is the counting numbers. And so, we have counting numbers. That's the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Two, three, four. And you can always go larger number here. So give me a number, one million. I go one million and one. So one billion, one billion and one. So they, they go forever. There's no boundary. And the, the mathematician come up with the concept of infinity. But infinity is not a number, it's a concept. Because you, you cannot do to infinity what you do with normal numbers, right? What is one infinity plus one infinity? Is that two infinity? So that doesn't work. But uh, there is a concept of infinity. Now let's call this uh, set of number is n, the natural number or counting numbers. And then uh, there is a zero uh, because you want to have three minus three equals zero. Uh, you can do addition, uh, multiplication with zero. Zero times anything will be zero, but you cannot do division with zero. It doesn't work with division here, the zero. And there's a negative number, uh, so you have two minus three equals to minus one so we have integers integers go forever to the left to minus infinity zero is in the middle and one two three and so on this set is the set of integers let's call that z then you have <coughs> the rational numbers rational number that means uh, all numbers that can be written as ratio between two integers yeah. so let's say you have 1 for 2 minus 4 for 5 that's in, in uh, ratio between two integers uh, you can have fractions larger than 1 so let's say uh, 5 over 3 as fraction, you can all have decimal, decimal because decimal is also is like 0 0.12, <coughs> that, that's actually uh, 12 over 100, <coughs> and so on. Now you, you see that whole numbers, uh, integers and counting numbers, Integers is actually uh, a subset of rationals, yeah. Because because you you can have like two is actually a two over one or uh, four over two, yeah. Division. So like uh, you can go like uh, ten thousand divided by five thousand. That's also two. So when we talk about rational number, actually we have the equivalence class. Yeah. Equivalence class. Because uh, if, you, if you, let's say, uh, I want to have this number, 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is the same as all the set of x, such that x can be uh, 1 over 2, uh, can be 2 over 4, 5 over 10, or even 1000 over 2000, or I can do ratio of two negative numbers, like uh, minus 5 over minus 10, so a whole bunch of things. That's an equivalence class. That's why we have these equivalent fractions. Yeah when you want to add like for example 
2 over 3 plus 5 over 4 you cannot add this because they are of different uh, denominators so you try to pick one of the equivalents of 2 over 3 because we know 2 over 3 is the same as 10 over 15 yeah this is the equivalence of 2 over 3 and then you go with the equivalence of 4 over 5 that's uh, 12 over 15 so you get the result of 27 over 15 sorry 22 over 15 22 over 15 Oh, you, you can write this as a improper fraction like this or you can go to mixed fractions because this is larger than 1, 15 and then the remainder is 7 so you have 1, 7 over 15 now uh, the decimals is also a fraction because any decimal it's actually a ratio between two numbers. So if you write 0 0.25, that is essentially means 25 over 100. So it's a rational number. Now, one thing that we notice about rational number is when you try to do decimal representation of uh, fraction you can have like a unending decimal the, say you have 1 over 3 if you <clears throat> write this as decimal it will go 0 0.3333 and without any ending so it goes on forever now uh, rather than <clears throat> writing down all the decimal points here, the decimal places uh, you can write like 0 0.3 this this is the called recurring decimal yeah. recurring decimal recurring decimal means it's repeated like this or, or sometimes you can write 0 points we with the yeah, that's also the uh, recurring decimal <clears throat> now any any fractions uh, can be written as a recurring decimal let's say uh, I want to divide like uh, say 7 divided by 39 I'm gonna go with my calculator to see the decimal uh, where's my calculator? Let's go to the calculator. Seven divided by thirty-nine. That's uh, if you see this. That's actual. Uh, this is the decimal, but uh, it should go on forever. Yeah, but the, the the calculator doesn't show the dot 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 here, but it means it's going forever. Now, uh, if you see this number actually repeating itself, right? This one seven nine four eight seven, and then. Any fractions is actually, uh, you can see like this, and yeah, this is just a rounding. The, the calculator rounded up. It should be uh, if you when this is one seven nine four x seven four x seven, and it goes on forever. Yeah. It should be like this. So uh, you can write this as 0 
this. So this is denoting that this will be repeating, re recurring decimal. <clears throat> okay, that's rational number. Uh, but there is a number that cannot be represented by a recurring decimal. Uh, so if you have, uh, now, now we have the irrational number. So irrational number means numbers that cannot be written as ratio between two whole numbers. So irrationals uh, square root of two. Yeah. If you, if you go square root of two with calculator, say uh, square root of two. Sorry, that's not how it works. So you write two and then press the square root. Okay, so you have this square root of two. However uh, large the decimal is, you, you cannot have the re re recurring decimal. So square root of two, that's, okay, let me just do this. Then there is a number pi, that's also irrational. Uh, e or a any other uh, and so on. Uh, this set is the irrational numbers. Let's call that E, uh, I. So if I want to write square root of 2, then This is uh, not ending, but there is no pattern actually. There is no uh, repeating uh, decimal here. Four, one, four, and so on and so on. Now I, I can go <coughs> with the uh, more decimal points, but square of two. Let's say here. See, if you go to the more digits, uh, even more digits, there is no pattern. There is no repeating pattern. So that's the property of irrational number. You cannot have a decimal representation that have a repeating decimal uh, places. Uh, let's try also number pi. Pi is also irrational. So if you go to more digits, and it's amazing that there is a contest <coughs> uh, for for people to remember like uh, all these numbers of pi up to some points, like uh, they can go like maybe hundreds of places, decimal places. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, that you, you cannot really write it down as uh, repeating decimals. Okay, so uh, let's say pi is also 3.14159 and so on. <clears throat> there is one tricky part of uh, decimal representation. In that e even whole numbers or fixed decimal point number sometimes can be written as uh, an ending decimal. So, for example, uh, I want to show you that actually 1 is equal, exactly equal to 0 0.9999. Nine, 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 and so on. What? It looks like they're different, right? This is this is less than one, but no, no, it's actually exactly equals to one. Okay. If you don't believe me, I'm going to prove this uh, by writing x equals this number. Nine, 
Nein. And it, the decimal goes on forever. But if I multiply by 10, then I get 9.9999. Nine, 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 and so on. Now, if I subtract 10x minus x, it's going to be 9x. And that means I'm, I'm, uh, I'm subtracting this 9.9. .9 Subtracted by 0 0.9. So the result is 9x here, 10 minus 1. 10x minus 1x, that's 9x, equals to 9, exactly 9. So that means x equals to 1. Right? So I have proved that 0 0.99999 is actually equals 1. Now in similar fashion, uh, you, you can prove that let's say 0 0.739999 is actually equals to 7, uh, 0.74. <clears throat> exactly equal. Okay, so that's all about decimals. So, all together, uh, we have these counting numbers, which is part of the integers. Integers include counting numbers, negative counting numbers, and zero, and the rational. The rational number. This is rational. And there is the irrational numbers, which cannot be written as ratio of ratio of two whole numbers. Or cannot be written as decimal that is recurring. So this is irrational, and altogether, this makes up the real numbers. Yeah, real numbers. So that's real numbers are the numbers that we are. Uh, let's call this set of real numbers. Yeah. Set of irrational plus rational comes real number. So if you if you have the representation of numbers in the number line, you see that if you want to do the integers, this is the integers, it's not a line, it's actually a discrete. Yeah, discrete. This is discrete. Discrete. So uh, you have zero in the middle and uh, minus one, minus two, and so on there, and one and two. So then you have the rationals. Rationals also discrete. So say I have here one and two. This is one and so on. Now, <clears throat> what makes up for continuous uh, line is the irrational. Yeah. So, irrationals. Actually, if you look at this, there are much more irrational number than rational number. So that means that even though they are both uh, infinity. There are so many, infinitely many integers, infinitely many rationals, and infinitely many irrationals. But the size of irrational is actually much bigger. Yeah. Much, much, much bigger than 
there are much more there are actually much more irrationals so later on you will learn that uh, when you talk about infinity not all infinity are the same yeah some some infinity are larger than the others yeah some infinity maybe you heard this from a movie some infinity are larger than the others but it, it's true in math some infinities <coughs> some infinities are larger than the others are larger than the others so we gonna learn about uh, the orders of infinity then all right so with irrational number actually we can have a continuous line that fill in all of these real lines yeah. this is called the real number line a real number line a real number line so if we have the zero here discrete uh, integers and then decimals and fractions Re recurring decimals this is 0 0.5 or uh, 1 over 2 and so on the the property of continuity of real number is you can always fill in between two points you can always fill in this line so this is 0 this is 0 0.1 you can always go with the number in between that's 0 0.05 and then if you go 0 0.05 here 0 0.05 then there is a 0 0.025 you go uh, <clears throat> so continuous mean you can cut however small and it will never end yeah. so continuity of real line means uh, you can go arbitrarily very small but never really approaches zero so that's the concept of infinitesimal the continuity of real line and the concept of infinitesimal is what allows us to do calculus in calculus the central theme is taking limits for example you, you can take a limit x approaches zero but never really uh, equals to zero now let's take a look at the definition of the limit of a function for every epsilon larger than zero small number epsilon larger than zero there is a delta which is also larger than zero small number larger than zero such that if you have uh, the absolute value of x minus a larger than zero but less than delta you will have the function of x minus l is smaller than epsilon uh, notice here that the function of x can be equal to l but the x cannot be equal to a this means uh, x must not be equal to a but uh, in some cases maybe fx may may be equal may be equal to l so this, this is a mathematical notation for every for each or for every for each then this is called there is and this is the notation for such that and this is if then uh, okay that's all about the uh, real numbers now uh, we also have uh, numbers uh, that is larger than uh, real numbers that's called the complex number 
complex number. So why did we invent complex number? So uh, mathematicians in the past have been struggling with solving equations. So if you solve equation like this, this is uh, solvable. But x square equals to nine. That means x equals to 3 or x equals to minus 3 because you, you, if you square 3 it becomes 9 if you square minus 3 it's also 9 but how about x square equals to minus 4 well there's no real numbers because any real numbers when you square become positive there's no real number that is going to give you negative number when you square it. So, uh, so they came up with numbers i. i is called imaginary number. Imaginary number. With the property is such that uh, i square is actually minus 1 equals to minus 1. So now you can have you can solve this so x square equals to minus 4 that means x is either positive to i or can be also negative to i so because now uh, x square equals 4 i square which is Minus four. Right. So altogether, the imaginary number, and so, so you can have a complex number z, which is real. <clears throat> so you can re, uh, write i uh, z <coughs> z uh, complex number is a, a real number plus i times b. Yeah, so this is a a b is a real number. A b uh, is a real number. So you multiply it by some real number, and this is called the real part. And this is the imaginary part. And this number is complex number. So uh, the imaginary part and real part are independent. That's why uh, when representing complex number, you don't represent on a number line, but on a number plane. So you can have this representation. This is called the real axis. This is the real axis. real axis and this is the imaginary axis or you, you can uh, now have let's say this is x and y if I have a number like this let's say this number p is equals to let's say 2 comma 3 that means it's 2 plus 3i yeah, so all this uh, leads to some different uh, and stunning uh, consequence when we deal with the complex number. And if, can you go even higher dimension? Yeah, Ortonian you can have actually uh, one real dimension and then three imaginary dimension so it's a uh, four dimensions uh, one real and three imaginary dimensions and uh, you, you can actually go forever and generalize this to higher but uh, we won't go that far okay that's all I have to say about numbers uh, I hope this uh, 
give some insights about uh, math and thank you for watching bye